Today I'm demonstrating the use of my audio spectralizer here in LabVIEW. The overall outcome of my audio spectralizer will take audio input and turn it into a format that we can view visually as well as allow me to adjust equalization and volume of our input. I'm going to start out by showing you here we have the audio in going to a graph so that we can see the original audio within time. From there we go ahead and break it down into different filters. I have a low pass filter, a mid band pass filter, sorry I said mid band pass, a mid band filter, and a high pass filter. You can see here we're going to control each of these filters so that we can adjust the frequency on the fly. I also have here after we've adjusted the frequencies the ability to control the intensity of those of the sound at those frequencies so here we have another slider which will be multiplied by the sound coming through it I've done that for each case and this sets us up so that we can have a form of equalization after that's over with we go ahead and send it through this device here which turns our sound from the time frequency I'm sorry from time into the frequency domain after all this is done we go ahead and send it so that we can see it visually as well as compare it to another value here for our highs so that we can turn LEDs on based off the decibel level at certain frequencies of our sound so here you can see the bullion LED and as well as our DAC assistant which will be sending the signals through our my DAC to our LEDs. So I'm going to go into here and show you a little bit about what went into setting up the DAC audio in. So we have a left and a right input the maximum and minimum amount of voltage that the MIDAC will allow us to use is 2 volts. Here you can see that I set the samples to 10, 10K so that way you'll see in a little while so that way I can have a little bit more time before errors appear. And of course audible frequencies go from all the way up to uh, 20 kilohertz is what the human ear can hear so I went well above it with 40 kilohertz. And that's the audio in. Now let's look at the audio out. The audio out is set up the same way with the plus two and minus two min and max. But here you can see that I've also set it up for a 10k and 40k, which is a one to one ratio for our data buffering. For our DAC outs here we have three because each DAC assistant that's collecting the signal and sending it out as a voltage can handle the left and right outputs. So I'll go ahead and open this and what you can see will be two digital outs. This will be left and right. This is the same for each case. We just have different cases which perform the various frequencies so we have the high case the mid case and the low case now that I've shown you the block diagram I'm gonna show you the front panel now here you can see the original data in the time frequency where we have amplitude and time and the final data which is in the frequency domain sorry I said time domain and frequency domain 
So here we have the amplitude and the frequency. Below that, I've broken all this up into a low, a mid, and a high graph. So this takes care of my low filter, my mid filter, and my high filter. And of course, this is the adjusting part. This is my cutoff frequencies where we can adjust the upper, mid range, and the low range filter. Uh, frequencies. Here are the equalizations for bass, mids, and highs. And of course, this is the decibel cut on ranges so that our LEDs can cut on. And then over here, what you can see is the volume and a stop button. So that's it for everything that I've got inside this program. Let's go ahead and demonstrate it. Commercial. Wouldn't you know? So I'm going to go ahead and start up the GUI. And this is the buffer error that I keep experiencing. So it'll do this a couple of times and then it finally phases out. The original in the time domain, the final in the frequency domain, our lows, mids, and highs. Here you can see white is the left channel and red is the right. And our air one more time. There it is. To continue. I'm going to play it again. Maybe this will be the last time. So here you can see the readout for our LEDs as well as our decibel cut on regions, our volume, You'll notice that it still shows all the data there, but in our final spectrum, everything is gone. See here? So now I'll turn it all back up and we can see it again. All bass. mids and the highs and finally we have our LEDs the two in the middle are base those are red the mids are in green, and the highs are in yellow. Those are both on the ends. I've split that into a left and a right. So our left channel's here, and our right channel's there. You'll also notice that each channel is playing at different amplitudes, or different decibel levels at certain frequencies. So if I turn the bass all the way down, you'll notice that we don't have any red lights on. We can turn the mids off, and you'll see only the highs are on. We can turn the mids back up, and we'll turn the highs down. Now only bass.
now I'm gonna adjust our cutoff frequencies. This is our upper high cutoff. This is our mid range. And our low. And this is because I turned it too low. So we'll start it back up again. Can't be zero, obviously. And we have no bass. I've cut it all out. Now we have all bass. That's all frequency ranges. This with no frequency cut out at all. Overall, you can make a pretty clean sound. Thank you for your time.